Yeah, yeah, yeah! Come and take a look at the snow. Bright white as far as your eyesight goes. Come and take a look at the fields of snow. I'll just get my coat, then we're good to go. Come and take a look at the lake. Let's have a quick skate before it gets late. Come and take a look at the frozen lake. Put your clothes on, mate. Don't make that mistake. Greetings, holiday shoppers. There are now 254 shopping days left until Christmas, and you know what that means. It's time for another episode of Christmas Creeps, your one-stop shop for holiday movies and TV shows all year round. My name is Joseph Wade. I'll be your host for this evening. Uh, Here with me tonight are my co-hosts, Johnny Five, the human robot. Hello. (laughs) Hello, J-Man. How are you tonight? Oh, I'm doing terrible. How are you? Oh, just the same. And Mr. Bradford is here as well. Brad, what's shaking? Ah, uh, I am. I'm doing well, my friend. Riding that high. One good can check deserves another. <sighs> Friends, I'm sorry for what just happened to us. Um, you know, <laughs> I think it was C. Montgomery Burns who said that the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. And that's definitely what happened to us this week, friends, because we had a movie lined up, ready to go to watch for this podcast. And the streaming gods said, oh, no, you don't, and took it right away from us. Uh, that film, uh, it was a dog movie. It was a Christmas dog movie. It was a 12 dogs of Christmas kind of dog movie. Actually, I don't think that's true. No, was it was it? the Chris, it was Christmas all over again. It, it was, it, it was the one that Kim again. Possible directed and starred in. Yeah, if that if that means something to you, then you know exactly what we're talking about. But uh, the powers that be of streaming internet movies said, "Oh, we can't let you be watching that garbage in April," and snatched it away from us. And we had to improvise rather quickly and landed on somehow, some way tonight's episode. An all dogs Christmas Carol. It's it's you. It's your fault. It, You're it the is... one to blame. Are you talking to me or the stream? Yes, I'm talking to. I'm well. No, both of you. You're both to blame. It is partly. It is my fault because we landed on two, and I I personally picked this one. So guys, again, I'm sorry. It was also partially my fault because I said I don't care. Dealer's choice. Whatever you. Whatever <laughs> floats your boat. So, so I'm, I'm. I guess I'm. My apathy is to blame as well. I'm going to let the buck uh, rest with Bradford on this one. Sure, I'll take it. I'll take Brad's it. Brad's general apathy is is to blame for everything that happens tonight, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, I was even going to say, you know, we missed uh, Norwich Madness this year. And so I thought, well, let's just do a series this month called April Sadness. <laughs> and, you kicking know, it off. kicking it off right with an all dogs Christmas carol. Friends, are you at all familiar with the all dogs go to heaven franchise? I'm familiar with how much Don Bluth loves killing animals. <laughs> Dude fucking loves that shit. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I mean, yeah. No, Brad, go on. No, it's uh, it's true. I I grew up. Um, one of my friends, I'm sure, had this on VHS, and I'm sure I watched it at some point. Not not this Christmas special, but All Dogs Go to Heaven. They had like all the Don Bluth movies. Um, but heaven help me if you put a gun to my head and told me, t- t- ask me to tell you about any single one of them except for Fern Gully. Good luck, uh, like, or I, um, or uh, what, what? What was it? Anastasia. I remember renting Anastasia from from the from the rental store and having a bit of a uh, a head trip as like what a six year old probably when that came out. <laughs> yeah, that with that, like it, with like the rib cage, like somebody dancing around in a rib cage. I remember that. That left uh, an impression on Lil Bradford. Um, no. I no. bet I'm willing to bet. I would bet my life on having seen All Dogs Go to Heaven before, but I would not bet my life on being able to provide you a single sal- uh, salient plot point from said movie. It was probably <laughs> on the, the background while I was doing something else over at my friend's place when I was like five years old. 
completely fair. Like, I feel like your household was, if you're a 90s kid, your household was one of two households. You were either a Disney household or somehow, some way, a Don Bluth household. Oh. Uh, no, I was, I yeah, I was, I was of the the former, but my my good friend was of the latter, and it it worked out well because he was also I was a Nintendo household, and he was a Sega household. I was about to make that very comparison. Yes, sir. We got the best of both worlds, my friends. Mm-hmm. No, no console wars here. It is a beautiful car- console armistice, and we got to do we got to do it all. Anyhow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, one... no, it was, a, it was very much like a, a Nintendo-Sega dichotomy, right? Yeah, and I'm like, the one thing I'll give for, like, Don Bluth movies in general is, like, that's the animation equivalent of, like, Blast Process. <laughs> he, <laughs> he figured it out. <laughs> the Sega of animation, right? Like, a little bit, like, kind of weird, off-model, but, like, still has its own thing going on, Still has right? its charms, and if you're into it, it's great. <laughs> right, exactly. But, but also... <laughs> I just my history my personal history with with his movies is like I could always tell one of his movies from a mile away because like they were th- the most traumatizing sad things I've ever seen even to this right? day like I can't Absolutely. watch Land Before Time anymore I can't watch an American <laughs> Tale anymore I watched the original All Dogs Go to Heaven just to understand what was going on for this episode and even that was a little like maudlin and too much for me today <laughs> Yeah, the only thing I remember about it is that they're like they go to the racetrack, like they've been on horses because it's a horse's birthday, and like, a, yep, I, yep, yep, it's 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 probably the most dead dogs I've seen in any movie that's not Resident Evil. Good <laughs> lord, was was um was Little Brave Toaster Don Bluth? Brave Little Toaster? No, I think that was like that was like proto Pixar, I believe. Oh, okay. Like, a lot of the Pixar... Like, it wasn't CG, but, like, a lot of the Pixar guys worked on it. Got... They kind of got their start on that one. Okay. All right. So, like, I mean, it all kind of flows back to Disney at some point, but... Right, right. Man, Disney fucking sucks. (laughs) How about that Disney? Uh, Let's hear it for Disney, everybody. (laughs) Let's hear it for the mega corporation Disney, uh, who is locking down their their Disney Plus service very shortly. Rips. (laughs) Yeah, rips to a real one. I, I walked into the room the other day while Nikki was watching that new movie, Wish. Oh, it's so bad. And, like, within, like, maybe two minutes of just watching it, I was like, this this whole movie is just member berries, isn't it? It's, it's so just bad. Like, like it's like Easter eggs for other Disney movies. There's not a story there. It's really bad. It was, oh, it was, I, I think I mentioned it on the pod before. We saw maybe. it in theaters. Not okay. a good time. It was fine. It was fine, but if, like, I, you could go see any other animated movie and probably have a better time. Honestly, I don't doubt it. You could probably go fucking watch Wishmaster and have a better time. Pay- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Anyhow, the tall anyway. man from Phantasm does a voice in Wishmaster, though. Is there a Christmas Wishmaster movie? Is there a Christmas Phantasm movie? Is there a Christmas Page Master movie? And we've come full circle. I don't know how we did it. No, we didn't. <laughs> well, I mean, before we talk about this nonsense, uh, I heard a couple of cans open up. Uh, can check, everybody. All right. Let's hear, let's hear it. Uh, I guess I'll go first. I have a, a Victory Dirt Wolf double IPA. Mm-hmm. It's it's good. It's a trusted friend. Victory Victory makes good stuff. Please send me a sticker, Victory. Mm, that sounds good. That sounds good. J man, what about you? I got this new thing I'm trying. I'm not have. It's called a, a waiter or wader. You hired a oh, waiter for your house. Wasser. No, there's oh water. Yeah, I, I, water. I got oh, out of okay. the toilet. You know. Oh, that <laughs> one. That one, huh? Speaking of things that aren't anything to do with what you're talking about, hey, uh, so I'm drinking a, a Beak and Skiff 1911 Cranberry Cider. What Trying makes it to... 1911? It's I... old. Oh, it was established in 1911. The, the year that this brewery was established is the largest uh, piece of information on this can. Okay. So, How's the Cranberry Cider? 
I mean, it tastes like a cran. It's cranberry and it's cider. Like, put those two flavors together. There you go, friends. They're it's they're two good. flavors that I enjoy. So it's pretty good. But. And you know, this is also April, so I'm just trying to get rid of it at this point. Oh, was this a was this a holiday joint? Oh, very much so. Yes. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, trying to dig through the back of the fridge and say, hey, what's going on back there? There so, you go. Yeah. So before we t- can talk about this special, I guess I need to kind of situate where it is in the All Dogs Go to Heaven like universe. Please do, because I thought these dogs were dead. <laughs> okay, so you got, you had the original All Dogs Go to Heaven. It came out in 1989. Uh, it's it's about the this it's about the main dog Charlie, who is kind of a shit heel, and his former partner who is who is Carface who is also the villain in this thing, uh, kills him to get him out of the way. He goes to heaven, realizes I don't want to be in heaven, steals a pocket watch that has like his is, is like his life essence, rewinds okay. it, goes back to Earth. And basically writes the wrongs and gets back at Carface and all that stuff. But the caveat is if the stop wa- if the pocket watch winds down and you know turns off, he can't go back to heaven and he has to go to hell. And watching that today, it occurred to me that is literally the exact plot of the of Spawn. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't get that out of my head watching the rest of this fucking kids movie. <laughs> Does does Charlie at some point go to hell in this movie for like a brief moment? He does. It's it's like a uh, it's a dream sequence, but you're like, okay, Uh-oh. that's what that's what hell's gonna be. But it's like all lava and fire and brimstone and stuff. Sweet, it's just the real deal. Uh, so, you know so, what? What I'm gonna call our shot. The next the next stocking stuffer we should really do, and we're gonna get some SEO going here. Is the Smiling Friends Christmas special where another Charlie also goes to hell? Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, please yeah, continue. Was... <laughs> okay. Um, but then they made a sequel uh, in 1996, I believe. And the sequel is apparently his... F- uh, I'm, I'm, let me get this right here. Um, his friend Charlie... No, his friend Charlie. His Itchy. friend Itchy. His pal Itchy... Uh, is also now in heaven and decides that he doesn't want to be in heaven. So they go on a second adventure. But um, is Charlie dead at the end of the first all dogs? Y- yes. Like, like he like, comes, he, he comes back to life, does his stuff. And then like having made good on everything says, I'm okay being dead. And he goes to go. He literally goes to heaven. Okay. That's the end of the movie. So despite Charlie being kind of a, kind of a kind of a piece of shit the title is true like all dogs no matter what they did go to heaven is that That, yes that's literally explained like you know all dogs are good and pure so no matter how bad a dog is they go to heaven whether they like it or not all dogs are bastards all right except for if unless charlie messes up with the pocket watch and he'll be the first dog in in history to go to hell charlie don't forget to wind your watch Exactly. All right. Con- um, thank you for explaining this to me. Continue. Okay, the, the sequel takes place 60 years later. 60? Yes. So the original takes place in 1939. The sequel okay. takes place in 1999. All right. Okay. <laughs> Where Itchy is now in heaven. So apparently Itchy has been alive a long fucking time. Um, <laughs> But they have to go back to Earth to stop somebody from stealing uh the angel gabriel's like apocalypse horn yeah this time they got to go back and protect john connor yes (laughs) (laughs) in the second one so in the first one charlie is voiced by burt reynolds in the second one he's voiced by charlie sheen (laughs) huh in the third so not the third in the after the second one they made a tv series where charlie and itchy are guardian angels watching over random kids in san francisco okay and that's kind of where this links in right yes this and all dogs christmas carol is literally the series finale of the all dogs tv series oh yes huh 
Even though, like, as as the series finale, they said, let's just make it a direct-to-video Christmas movie. Why not? I see. So, in this, the entire, like, voice cast for the TV series came back to do all of their voices again. Uh, including a couple of people from the original film. So, uh, yeah. I'm not going to do this. I'm, I, I don't care enough to do this. I was going to break it down. With Carface being like ninety years old, but I'm not gonna do it. I don't care. It, <laughs> Anyways, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't it's matter. It's a cartoon. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Like, like Charlie and Itchy being guardian angels. Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> but yet, still being flesh and blood dogs. Apparently, apparently, I guess. Apparently, I'm not entirely sure. And again, they don't really. It's enough of a children's movie where, like, I don't care, <laughs> and they didn't either. Yeah. They didn't. They didn't bother. So why should we? Exactly, friends. That's where we're at. <sighs> and like th- watching this whole thing play out, I'm, all I'm doing is like looking up the voice actors and trying to figure out who can we get in the Triple Threat Club. And I don't think there's any candidates in this. So we got Ernest Borgnine, right? And we did the Grinch, the OG Grinch special, right? But he's do we have do we have anything else with Mr. Borgnine going on? I don't even know if he was in the original Grinch. He was saying you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. That was not Ernest Borgnine, friend. Ah, I thought it was Ernest Borgnine. That was Thurl Ravenscroft. Oh, see, you that's know, Tony see, the Tiger. See, that's why you're just much you're just much smarter than me with a huge no. c- cock of a voice. <laughs> No, it. (laughs) Thank you, Brad. Thank you. That's why you're the dean of this podcast. Okay, so that was not Ernest Borgnine. My mistake. No, that's okay. That's okay. We got all right. We got the wacky brother from Wings. Yeah, Stephen Weber is now taking over for Burt Reynolds slash Charlie Sheen. Um, I don't think he's been in any other Christmas movies either, though. You know, I could be wrong. I would love to be wrong about any of these. We've got. Dom DeLuise as Itchy. He's like one of the only people who's played his same character throughout the entire run of these movies and series. Uh, he's, he's a workhorse. Also, he's, he, he's he loves a, what he does. He is a, a Don Bluth uh, diehard, apparently. If we were doing he's a... a <laughs> if, you were, if we were doing a triple threat club for the Don Bluth verse, he'd all, he would be in it to win it, yes. He's in it for the love of the game. Absolutely. But again... Don't think he's done any uh, other Christmas movies than this. So that's a shame. Uh, so let's get off of this train because there's there's no fruit on this tree. And I'm just mixing my metaphors at this point. <laughs> I re- See, here's the thing. I really, really don't want to play the donation game this week. Even because though I... It would be it's... too easy. Because it was because a it would be too easy, but b I did just donate money to our local SPCA, and again, uh, <laughs> that's just kind of the layup now, isn't it? Yes. Well, thank you for doing that. Of course, of course. Jonathan uh, was able to get it in twenty seven seconds last week, so we donated thirty three dollars to our local SPCA. You know what? Maybe I sh- maybe I should put. In in the spirit of keeping things going, I'm gonna put my money where where my mouth is, and we are gonna play this game. Oh, geez, but Louise. finally, Joseph, I don't know that. Have you ever played this game? You know, no. That's you know that's that's why that's why musicians learn to play music so they don't have to dance. <laughs> so so I think we're gonna play this game. Okay, okay. and I think I I will um. It's our usual thing. You're going to have 60 seconds, and we will uh, we'll take the difference, and I will donate that to a charity of your choice. Okie dokie. I mean, I would you, feel uh, like a re- I would feel like a real heel not giving money to another animal shelter after this. That's fair. Well, why don't you? Uh, we're gonna play this game, okay? And okay. you're gonna direct me to to an animal shelter of your choosing, okay. or uh, animal oriented charity of your choosing. I so see. Why don't you collect your thoughts? And okay. I'm gonna go okay. ahead and uh, get a stopwatch ready, and you let me know when you're ready, and I will start start the timer. 
<sighs> okay. I am I am ready. You ready? I'm gonna count yes, you sir. in. <clears throat> uh I'm gonna you're gonna go on go. All right. Okay. I'm gonna start yes, the timer on on three, two, one, go. So all right. Three, two, one, go. Annabelle the Heaven Dog reads a Christmas story to a bunch of uh, dog children at Christmas time in heaven about the time that Charlie and Itchy, two guardian angel dogs that live in San Francisco, saved Christmas by making their longtime nemesis Carface come to terms with the terrible choices that he's made in his life uh, because they realize that he is going to ruin Christmas with the help of a demon dog named Belladonna who's going to make all the dogs in San Francisco steal Christmas presents from under the tree using an evil whistle dog whistle that she has made Carface steal. Uh, so Charlie and Itchy uh, conspire to do a Christmas Carol thing on Carface where they show him his past, his present, and his future uh, to make him see the error of his ways and help them save the day. Uh, God bless us, everyone. The end. I got you at 51 seconds. Oh, God. <laughs> now in the spirit of Christmas... <laughs> I will add ten sec. I will add ten dollars onto that donation because nine dollars is a little too miserly. <laughs> I mean that cover that covers the the uh, transaction fee. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna put you down for for nine, but um, we'll we'll just go ahead. And, well, let's just go ahead and make that an even twenty, there, my friend. You know what? I'll also throw in nine because I feel like I screwed the pooch on that one. <laughs> literally no i'm just kidding no uh no it's it's i i i see why you you've always lobbed this game towards jonathan and i no you did great you really covered all the bases i covered all the bases but to what end i think i could have uh tightened it up i think you could have probably dropped the framing device for starters (laughs) you know what you know this is my first time i think i did okay i at least won the game you did it we, we've you done it, it before where someone has gone grossly over and, like, that ain't helping anybody. Yeah. All right. So $20 to the charity of, of your choosing. Oh, I'll, I'll, uh, throw in, I'll throw in nine as well. I'll, I'll Venmo you $9. So make it an even, a nice 29 That's That's helpful. I'll, we'll just make it 30 <laughs> Okay. Nice round terms. Happy, so just, happy just, tax day, everybody. Oh, yeah. That's coming up. Uh Maybe file your taxes if you haven't done that yet. Although I think if this will come out after tax day. I mean, you should really uh, file them. Like, yeah. Uh, if you haven't done your taxes yet, you you might want to do it if you live in the United States. This We're... episode was not brought to you by TurboTax. Yeah, of course not. If you live in a, a civilized country where they do their t- you, the, the government does your taxes for you, though, ignore this message. Anyhow. True that um good job so so yeah this like 70 minute uh all dogs go to heaven series finale has to also cram in like a 30 minute christmas carol somewhere in the middle of all that (laughs) and it's kind of a lot it's they don't even get into the christmas carol angle until like what i didn't i didn't write down the timestamp. That's a good 30 minutes into the special, oh. right? Oh, it's a solid 30 minutes because they waste a lot of time doing their own thing, like like interacting with their own series of characters, singing songs, and then like, oh yeah, we have a plot to get through. There's 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 a five minute song. So there's the framing device, right? Right. And then there's like a five minute Christmas song. About and how great Christmas l- is, yes. And then and then Carface comes and steals everybody's stuff. Mm-hmm. And then there's like another solid five to ten minutes of just cartoon hijinks is the best way I can describe it. It it, it does kind of become like a little home alone-ish there for a bit. Because yeah. yeah, Carface steals all of like the dogs' money or or bones. Bones, <laughs> but also money. They're counting coins at the I don't know. Right. And so Charlie and Itchy decide they're going to, like, break into his headquarters and steal it back. But everything they do fails because this is a cartoon. Uh, Like, up to and including, like, they do the two people stacked in a trench coat routine to get into the vault. And that fails. They try to go down the chimney like Santa Claus, but he blasts them with a rocket. And that fails. And then they (laughs) just try to break down the door with a Christmas tree. Which works, but also they just get kicked out anyway. And then they call yes. the cops, but the cops just shoot all the dogs. 
<laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh no, at that. No, Jonathan, but... no, I think you're mistaken. Don Bluth didn't actually do this one. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, it did have dead puppies at the beginning, though. Like you, you, the way you get angel puppies is by having dead puppies. That's true. That is extremely true. Yes. Like the as soon as I hit play on this, and you see like angel puppies in heaven, like my first thought was like, "Oh no, I've done something horribly wrong." <laughs> like in in Final Fantasy fourteen, in one of the areas, there's like uh, f- fairies or pixies, and like it's like, "Oh, they're the spirits of children," which means there are a lot of dead children running around that area. Yeah, that's Welcome true. Welcome to video game chat, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to dead kid chat, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> if you're playing along at home, this is the moment when you take a drink and then never um, stop. Well, it's fun that you mentioned that because there's there's Timmy, which we haven't talked about. Oh, and man. Timmy, yeah. is, Timmy is the Tiny Tim stand-in, who is a, a real-life puppy uh, living in San Francisco who has a, has a bum leg. But it's it's mentioned several times throughout this movie that Timmy's probably not going to make it to the next Christmas without a medical intervention. Uh, which I don't believe Dickens wrote into the original Christmas Carol. Yeah, like we don't know what's wrong with Tiny Tim. It's just that, oh, he's sickly and he's poor. That's and not he's going to have a bad time. It's not That's... that he's going to die in six months if he doesn't receive this operation. Hey, look, look, listen, his rear, his back leg is in a splint. This will kill him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> but I mean, it's it. Later on, they kind of get into like the actual like what's going to happen to him, and they kind of imply it. But yeah. it's it's still very like vague, wishy washy. Like, oh yeah, Tiny Tim's going to die. Yeah, Tiny Tim dies because he, like, watched the ring tape through a kinetoscope. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Wait, he he was the only one? Like, why didn't they get anybody else? Uh, He he was the only one who watched it. So Charlie announces that they're going to run a scam on Carface to get Carface to, like, give the money back. But he he gives a very, like, winking to the camera and says, like, we're going to do a dickens of a scam. Is 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 it really a scam though? Is it's it a, more of a it's more of a guilt trip than a scam, right? Well, I mean, any anything that bilks money out of another person, I guess, is technically a scam. I suppose the the Webster's definition of a scam. I guess it applies here, but no, they're just gonna they're just gonna show him the error of his ways, which they can do because now that I know this, they're guardian angel dogs, so they have like the magic of heaven or whatever. That explains they why they do be, all the things that they do. But they have to be granted it through a special collar that they only get every once in a while, apparently. Uh, something like that. I, I didn't go into the full like series to understand their deal. But I guess yeah. I guess that's what's going on. Yeah, because they only have cert- a certain amount of power with the with the magic dog tag. Right. Yeah, the power only lasts until like the little song ends. <laughs> it's convenient, but they they start they they start their thing uh, with Carface watching TV in his bed on Christmas Eve, and Itchy shows up as the ghost of Christmas past. And shows Carface his first Christmas at home with his mother. And oh, that's adorable. Uh, and then you see him in his his first human family's home, which is the which I re- noticed they called it the Parker House, which is obviously a reference to a Christmas story. So this yes. was this was Ralphie's dog at some point. Hmm. Right? Maybe. I, I guess. Yes. I suppose I <laughs> I'm trying to make bu- this fun for myself. Okay. Maybe it was Warby Parker. You do the, you do you. Well, you know, that kid did wear glasses, so I'll buy that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Carface face is like, I guess original sin was that he, what did he do? He broke something in the house. He, he, he was a, on the floor. He was a fucking puppy and <laughs> just had shit ass humans. That's all I was wrong. The uh, Timmy's the one who broke something in the house. You're right, though. Carface knocked over the Christmas tree and then peed on it. And uh, it, it was then that it occurred to me, like, he should have taken a lesson from Rover Dangerfield. Because Rover Dangerfield is very clear. Uh, he would never do it on a Christmas tree. 
<laughs> and if you're familiar with Rover Dangerfield, you know what I'm talking about. There's an entire song in the middle of that animated Rodney Dangerfield talking dog movie where he sings about not <laughs> wanting to piss on Christmas tree. <laughs> Uh, um, if it were yeah, a Christmas no, movie, the, we could talk about it, but no, we can't. We have to do it here. <laughs> yes. Um, obviously, it's just the humans being garbage humans and not realize, realizing that a an on-house trained puppy will be wherever it damn well pleases. That is true. Yeah. So he's out on the street. Uh, then Christmas present shows up, and it's the female dog named Sasha, who... Shows him a musical number from Killer, who is trying to wrap a monogram blowtorch for Carface, which is adorable. It's maybe the best. It's my favorite bit of this movie, honestly. It's delightful. <laughs> I just like Killer. I think I just like Killer. Killer's... Is he in the original movie? Yes, he is. Yeah. Uh, Killer. Let's see here. Who is Killer? Killer is voiced by Charles Nelson Riley. Who also did him did the voice in the first movie. So him, okay. him and Dom DeLuise are the only two who who have been through this entire series. Good for them. Yeah, here's the the nutty part of being about the cast. So, Baby New, New Earth is Annabelle and Belladonna, and for the Belladonna voice, it sounds like she's imitating Tress McNeil, who was on the series. Yeah, that's absolutely like a Tress McNeil sort of joint. It, right? he, totally. Like, who did Tress McNeil play in the series? Does it say? Uh, yeah, it did, um, Winifred Bessemi Bess de Vinkerville, or, and, or Gerda. Okay, yeah, those words mean nothing to me, yeah, so. Yeah, not characters I've heard of, like, <laughs> no, okay. couldn't tell you. All right. I mean, I mean, she's just doing, like, she's just trying to do Darkwing Duck villainess, whatever her name is, right? That's what, that's what she is, right? Oh, yeah, At totally. Point, Absolutely, yeah. Oh, Elvira Duck or whatever her name is. What is it? <laughs> I was thinking of like the girl demon from Gargoyles. What was her name? It's basically Belladonna, right? Gurgle- yeah. Gargoyle? <laughs> girl Goyle. <laughs> like choose choose like a vaguely goth female antagonist from a children's cartoon in the nineties, and you're there. You that's, got it. That's the one. It's done. Yeah. There were entirely it's too many voice. of them for some reason. The, they they all have the same voice, and you know the voice. It's and they're you're there. doing re repulsive voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Also, yeah, Belladonna, who's the demon dog, sings her part of the song, and it's like for a second I thought she was singing it from hell until they established <laughs> that it's Alcatraz Island. <laughs> and so, like, I literally wrote in my notes: this movie beat South Park to Christmas time in hell by a full year. <laughs> And I'm going to stand, I'm going to die on that hill. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. All right. Uh, Then then Sasha shows him, and by him I mean Carface, Timmy's home life because Timmy is living with a poor family. And if, you know, if Timmy doesn't behave, then mom's going to put the dog back out on the street. And that is what will kill him. It's, It's later revealed. Because if he can't stay in a warm home with a loving family and they don't have the money to support him, he's gone. He's a goner. Oh, he's going to be dead. And now Jonathan is posting Rita Repulsa gifts in the back <laughs> channel. No, that's me. I'm, I'm just <laughs> posting a mid bajillion Rita Repulsa gifts in the back channel. And, and I now I, a Rita Repulsa appreciation station. And I immediately hate that I noticed they're all three different actresses. <laughs> they sure are. Yikes. Uh, okay. Anyhow. <laughs> oh, boy. So... Carface sees a little bit of himself in Timmy, so he does. He starts to decide to ch- to you know change his ways, but not before the final act happens. And the craziest thing I've seen in this in this or any movie happens, which is that Charlie shows up as Christmas Future, and for yes, some does. <laughs> inexplicable reason, he is dressed like the mask. And he even says, what is it? Somebody stop me. He somebody, says a mask line. He says, somebody stop me. I thought it was supposed to be Dick Tracy. No, it's the mask. It's the, it's that's even fucking very worse. Clear, that's very clearly a mask reference. Yeah, I, stopped, the I stopped paying first words attention like five out of, minutes in. It, the, Look, the first words out of his mouth in this costume are, somebody stop me. 
And it's not Dick Tracy because Dick Tracy would never say somebody stop me because he's the head of the police and nobody would. (laughs) But then he sings a song to Carface called Clean Up Your Act about how Carface should clean up his act. And he does the entire thing in the mask costume. Like, it's not a joke or a sight gag. It's like, this is the bit that he's committed to for the rest of this act. It's odd. And like, to say the least. This is, this is 1998 we're talking about here. And this is a movie for four-year-olds. No four-year-old I could think of would either know or care what the mask <laughs> is. <laughs> It's something for the something for the parents, I guess. I, I, something maybe. for so, something for the older siblings who have to sit and watch this with their younger siblings. Right. Maybe. Something for the animators who had to work on this film, I guess. Something that, for the people in the storyboard room. That's I don't know. Probably more true. But it also yeah. it also kind of makes me sad that they did they couldn't get Burt Reynolds or Charlie Sheen back, I would have loved to hear either one of them do a mask impression. Just to say somebody stop me? Yeah, just to hear Charlie Sheen go, somebody stop me. Are they are either of them on cameo? Can we just get a cameo of them just doing their best mask impression? I think impression? it would be pretty hard to get a cameo of Burt Reynolds. Yeah, he is oh, in he, fact he, dead he, at this point. He is deceased? Okay, he, he well, has... this this continues a, a long-standing tradition of Bradford not knowing whether certain actors are alive or dead, so... I mean, I, I can search Burt Reynolds in Cameo, and we'll see what happens. As you were. Um, no, nothing happened. So let's look up Charlie Sheen instead. <laughs> uh, Charlie Sheen is temporarily unavailable, unfortunately. Well, that's a shame. He'd probably also be quite expensive, I would imagine. Probably so, but <laughs> that would be... Uh, quite the cameo request to just ask him to say somebody stop me somebody stop me in his in, ch- in his charlie b barkin voice from all dogs go to heaven too <laughs> <laughs> it almost makes me want to see if he comes back on if what the what the cost is because maybe maybe it's not maybe it's worth it i don't know uh, remember uh. remember the time we we Got a cameo from Michael Papa John, and he was very, very nice to us for no reason. Yes, he was a class act. <laughs> oh, good stuff. All right. Well, we're getting to the end of this. So Carface has definitely, like, seen the error of his ways, and he's going to change. And he's going to help them stop Belladonna's dastardly plan. To... But not before going through the with the plan, like, halfway. <laughs> Not be- yeah, not before getting hypnotized himself to going through with the plan. <laughs> like a real dipshit. <laughs> um, but eventually he comes through. But eventually, Cause of, yeah. Because of Timmy. Because of Timmy. All, he, sees a, he sees a lot of himself in that little dog. All for Timmy. And they launch the device and the dog whistle goes off and all the dogs are starting to steal their stuff. And then Carface says, No. The thing, the problem with this plan is that they're like, oh, it's going to ruin Christmas. It only ruins Christmas for any household that has a dog, which is probably like 30% of households in San Francisco at best. Maybe. Maybe. Like, you know, you have your, you have dog households, you have cat households, and you have no pet households. And in a city, I feel like it's going to be more leaning towards cats or no pets, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Especially like San Francisco. I feel like it, it listen anybody in San Francisco who happens to listen to the show if you know of like the pet population in your area please let us know cuz I would love to find out if you are a, if you are a, a census worker if you work at the city in San Francisco and you happen to know the 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 pet population uh drop us a line yeah xmascreeps@gmail.com are you guys required to re- register your cats with like the county or whatever? I don't think we're required to, but like if you're gonna chip your your cat, yeah, I think you do. Okay, but yeah. only if you like chip them, which you should, which you probably should, yeah. Okay, because I I'm required to pay a licensing fee for for Charles B. Barkin, uh, <laughs> Charles B. Barkin. <laughs> uh every year with the county so 
And if, if you I, don't I pay know. it, can the county start using his likeness without your permission? Uh, not over my dead body because that boy is gold. <laughs> Lay Lay and I have Lay and I have discussed at length if animal cloning gets cheap enough, if we could, um, if we could license out Charles Charles's genetics just because he's such a just as such a golden beauty boy. Yeah. But we haven't gotten there yet. I, I kind of hate to admit this, like on the podcast to the world, I would buy a Charles. You would buy a Char I everybody would buy a Charles. Everybody needs a Charles. He's he's gonna be he's gonna be a, a worldwide phenomena. He's the sweetest boy. You I must have a Charles. I feel own. like he's the one dog that our cat would be able to boss around, but she wouldn't because he's such he's just such a, a, a gentleman. Uh, no, the cat would absolutely boss around Charles. And it's not because he's a gentleman. It's just because he's a cowardly piece of shit. No, (laughs) I'm just kidding. He's the best boy. Nope, that's staying in, Brad. I'm not going to cut that out. (laughs) No, he's the best boy. You gotta, you gotta keep him. You want, you want a Charles. Everybody needs a Charles. Everybody needs a Charles. No one is arguing that. I love the Charles. I should mention, I mentioned this before. It took me about, uh, I was like two thirds to three quarters of the way through this movie when I realized this dog has the same name as my dog. Right. <laughs> Charles. Which is why we're, we're saying this. Exactly. And I am absolutely going to start calling him. We have a bunch of nicknames for him, but I'm going to call him Charles B. Barkin from now on. <laughs> I um, I really admire the restraint, even in like 1989, to not call your dog character Charles Barkley. Oh, I call him Charles Barkley already. No, I mean like in the movie. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Let's see. Let me think. Uh, we call him Charleston Chu. We call him Charlito, which was coined by one of our friends, and Char- then I spun that off into Supreme Court Justice Samuel Charlito. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I call him Stink Lord, Beauty Boy, depending on his current state of grooming. He's a good boy. I love him. He's a wonderful dog. I I think I'm the only dog. Am I the only dog owner currently in this in this podcast? I, I believe you are. Uh, the other two are are cat owners, I guess. But uh, there are enough dogs in my life that I can say I love a I love a good doggo. There's a good do- some good dogs out there. I got to hang out with Basil the other day, and he was a Aww. he was a real delight. Basil, how's Basil Bear doing? Basil's doing good. He's my brother's corgi, and uh, while 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 Dan is away on uh, vacation, Basil's hanging out with mom and dad, and oh, he is very well behaved. Let's hear it for the dogs. Let's, let's hear it for doggos, everybody! Yay, wanna, dogs! Want to pet those dogs? Also, I, I wrote in my notes here at some point. I said, if I had to pick any dog to wear a backwards hat, yeah, it'd probably be a dachshund. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, it, it, uh, Itchy was kind of doing the slink thing before slink a little bit. A little bit, yeah. But I then again, like, if you're going to make a cartoon dachshund, they all kind of behave about the same, I feel like, right? Sort of. Like, I, I, know, I know dachshunds are kind of... The, the dachshunds that I have met in my life have been kind of aggressive. They're also as dumb as a pile of bricks. They're some of the dumbest dogs. <laughs> like, like, no, seriously, look it up. If you look at a list of, like, breed perceived breed intelligence, dachshunds are almost always at the bottom of the list. <laughs> like, I've always heard that dachshunds ha- are, like, the, the one dog that has, like, a real Napoleon complex. Where, like, yeah. they, they either don't know how small they are or they do know how small they are and they're angry about it <laughs> <laughs> right um can we talk about the 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 sort of racist chihuahua uh, okay sure there's a chihuahua and being this being a a film from the 90s it has the accent you think it does Oh yeah, yeah he does. Yeah, I mean, it's Carlos Alves Rocky, so it's just it, he's he's just doing the Taco Bell dog again. Wait, oh, is it the literally the Taco Bell dog voice actor? Yeah, it's it's Rocco. Oh yeah, okay, that, that's true. Well, that is it. The, so I guess give the him Taco a, Bell I, dog I mean, that, is in that this. That doesn't movie. make the voice not like that, but 
yeah, at least <laughs> it actually is a, a you know, a um a Hispanic person doing yeah. the voice. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. It, I'll give them that. It's uh, and it's literally the Taco Bell Taco Bell dog voice person, right? Yes, yes it's uh, Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life. Caricature oh. though it may be. Okay. I'll give them that. Brad just I, made that I, connection. <laughs> I'm not going to rescind this statement, but it makes it a little bit better, right? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, they still made the decision to have a Chihuahua with a with a, a Mexican accent in their movie, I guess. But whatever. I mean, it, it's in in the, the 90s uh, were a different time. In the in the big book of of like race jokes, that's like the easiest layup, right? Like you don't yeah. you don't want to make it. Nobody should make it, but like yeah, it's there. It's a it's a it's a minor sin, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> I mean, we've gotten over the Taco Bell dog. I think we can move on, you know, as a society. As a society. <laughs> we also uh... yeah, we've also got a couple of other like a lot of just sort of veteran voice actors, and they're all credited as just additional cast. Like I yes. don't know who they voice in here, but you know, D. Bradley Baker's in here. He's he's been a big Warner Brothers guy for a long ass time. Uh, let's see who else we got. Yeah, I'm just reading IMDb now. Yay for me! <laughs> that's that's our podcast. Welcome. Yeah, there's a couple uh, other standbys in here. There's um, the woman who did the voice of Ducky in Land Before Time uh, after Judith Barcy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Judith Barcy was was in the original All Dogs Go to Heaven. Um, that was her last movie. We bring that so, up. We bring that up like too much on this podcast. I feel and I, and it makes me uncomfortable. Hmm. Um, but let's move on. Let's do. Let's talk about uh, dumb dogs and stuff. Yeah, the dogs are very dumb. The dogs are dumb, move, and the day in is this saved. Movie. Uh, and... The day is indeed saved. The whistle is canceled, and the dogs, being the the good good boys and girls that they are, take the presents back into the house. Yes, because they, they know to do that. Because they're good <laughs> dogs, and all dogs go to heaven. <laughs> I guess. And I, I guess, like, if that's going to be the end of the series, this like, wh- how does the series end? Well, I guess all dogs go to heaven. There you go. Well, Christmas is Christmas is saved and all dogs go to heaven. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> no, um, no cats were harmed in the making of this special. There wasn't a single cat in this movie, was there? I don't think there were. Unless you want to count, like, the weird, like, hell demons that Belladonna hangs out with. Those aren't cats. Those are, those are imps. Whatever. Same difference. Uh, but I repeat myself. <laughs> da 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 <laughs> Uh, uh, let's hear it for cats everybody cats are all right they get a bad rap they're fine i love our cat what are you talking about so yeah i'm dumb talking about this this is dumb let's go if you don't oh. like cats fuck you no they're fine they're good animals they 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 reflect ourselves they're selfish creatures just like humans are no yeah and who can and who can blame them <laughs> Cats are blank slates that we project our own personalities upon. <laughs> Precisely. Dogs are, All right. are genuine emotional creatures. Birds are perfect mimics. Cats are like fucking mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's, let's go to the crankometer, shall we? Yes. Oh, God. This is our patented XY axis for rating Christmas movies. This is a movie. This is a Christmas special. Like, So I'm not counting this as like a stocking stuffer or anything. But this is our, our patented XY axis for rating Christmas movies. The X axis is how, how Christmassy a film is, and the Y axis is how good a film is. So in All Dogs Christmas Carol, friends, how Christmassy is this? I'm going to go out on a limb and say not very Christmassy. No, it's like kind of at best, right? Yeah. They do all like the butt Christmas, so Christmas is the best time of year, and they ape a Christmas Carol, which they get no points for. Yeah, because it's it's extremely like we read the cliff notes and this is what happens. Yeah, they they read the assignment and phoned it in. Um I will say I appreciated like when Carface is going through the TV channels and he lands on one that says like it's a wonderful Carface. I thought that was pretty funny. 
Okay. But that's that's it, nothing. That's nothing. Uh zero? Maybe a one? <sighs> like here's the thing that we always say is it doesn't misuse Christmas at all, you know? Like no. the, the general like spirit of giving and, and, and the, just you know the good vibes of the season really carry it and there's really not much lip service paid to like Christmas as a holiday. I will give it this in that like the background music used a lot of like subtle lay motifs from Christmas like classic Christmas songs. Yeah, that's like true. if you listen closely, there's like "God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen" and yeah. "Jingle Bells" and other stuff like that. Like that was, that is the most credit that I'm willing to give this movie. Uh, that's like, fine. Whoever did the whoever did the score for it did a pretty bang up job on it. Yeah, and like yeah. didn't make it wasn't beating you over the head with it, but was like if you were listening for it, did a pretty good job. And that's where I'm willing to give it maybe a point. I can see that. Uh, Jonathan, what do you think? This movie is written by a guy named uh, Jim Magon. Jim is spelled J-Y-M-N. No, <laughs> you're making that up. Fuck you. No, I'm sorry, is he's that... not. <laughs> Jungle Jim. I, I do kind of hate, hate, though, that on IMDb it credits three writers. Jim Magon, Charles Dickens, and Don Bluth. It credits Charles Dickens and Don Bluth. Like they were all in the same room at the same time. <laughs> Do they even credit them in the in the credits? Uh I, I wanna of the, f- of the film? I mean, this is IMDB, so it's very basic like crew info. But okay. I'm trying to find Oh yeah, here. J- Jim Megan, uh, Charles Dickens, and then J- characters created by don bluth so like they, i mean they, they kind of parse it out i guess but still i guess it's like based on the concept by charles dickens based on the characters by don bluth i don't know yeah it's, it's but that doesn't that, yeah it's just the way imdb like couches it i think is funny <laughs> it's not, not nothing to do with the film it's it's all on imdb because they're as their you know metadata is just kind of falling apart <laughs> right i'm i'm fine giving this a i'm sorry i stole that from jonathan completely i am sorry jonathan <clears throat> do you have anything else to add any votes on christmasity there john uh it was a christmas carol that that's about all i have to say about it so it was bah humduck and that was really bad <laughs> you know i'm willing to give this the edge over bah humduck just because oh. this- for sure. Bahumduck was <laughs> Bahumduck is an abomination to God and man. Because this is more just like, yeah, we know you know what the Christmas carol is. We're just gonna do it. Bahumduck is so like ham fistedly terrible. Yes. Like no there's no saving that. This I'm willing to give it at least one point, like just for, for Brad's point there. But um Yeah. Does that does that make it a zero or a one? do you think oh god here i want to give this a, a, a value neutral zero so bad i think a zero is fair for this okay. movie because it does so it does so little with like what it's given it doesn't do any twists on a christmas carol there's not a really a whole lot going on with like the christmas thing beyond the the trite christmas is the best time of the year hooray yeah, yeah. There's like one store window in the entire thing. The the dogs decorate for Christmas, but like, who cares? I don't know. That's true. Yeah, I'm like all the all it the... just doesn't it doesn't exude the feeling of Christmas, right? Right. I don't get it. I, I wouldn't think of this as a Christmas thing unless they said it out loud. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't give off that Christmas vibe that we're looking for. Right. I think. And and Christmasity is very much like a vibe va- vibe based scale, is it not? The very much so, yes. A zero, I think, is fair for this movie. Also, I I, I want to point out, I just discovered the, um, I guess the French poster for this movie, okay. where where it's not an all dogs Christmas Carol, it's not like an all dogs go to Christmas special. It's called Charlie the Christmas Story. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie the Christmas story. Charlie Le Conte Sweet. de Noel. <laughs> Sweet. 
great. Someone's probably going to correct me on that. I don't care. So yeah, this is a zero on Christmosity. Now the 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 y-axis, friends. Was this any good at all? Mm, not really. <laughs> no. Like I don't want to be mean to it. Is that's my only defense? Is I don't want to be mean to it because I realize this is for small small children, and that's okay. But if you're going to ask me to watch this again, I'm going to laugh in your face. Yeah. No. It was. It did not. He, I think a problem we've had on Christmas creeps recently, and which is why I was so excited to watch Christmas all over again, is that it looked like an unmitigated pile of garbage. We've been watching too much like halfway decent stuff on Christmas creeps recently, right? Yeah, we, we. I think we have. We've been watching real movies lately, and it's kind of spoiled us. This is the first movie in a while where I could not bring myself to give it my undivided attention. <laughs> so I think that's already that already puts it in the negative column. Yeah, you're like already a negative. I'm gonna give it a soft negative, like a negative one or a negative two. Like it's bad, but like, what do you expect? It's a, a made-for-TV movie for literal babies, right? Right, and it's like it's the end of a run of a franchise that should never have been a franchise in the first place. So, like, probably nobody was really giving a shit. That's fine. You're making right. your paycheck and you're getting out the door. That's fine. <laughs> and yet, in that sense, I think it should get a negative score because nobody was in this for for the love of the game right i I think that's pretty much it like it was it was absolutely the definition of phoned in right right like i i can appreciate that they decided like we did three seasons of an all dogs go to heaven tv series (laughs) how do we end this let's make a christmas movie i get that (laughs) but i also just think you know just let it be over (laughs) let this be done (laughs) I'm going to go with, like, a negative one. I'm fine giving it a negative one. Like I, like I said, I don't want to be mean to this movie. I just, it's just not for me, and I'm just not four years old. Uh, I mean, right. yeah, I, I can, I'm not going to give it too much credit because it's a kind of lazy direct-to-video sequel in the era of lazy direct-to-video sequels. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. I mean, this was also, I, I looked this up for my notes. This came out the same week that two other Christmas movies did, uh, which okay. we've covered on the podcast. Uh, the Jonathan Taylor Thomas I'll Be Home for Christmas movie. And also the Will Smith Enemy of the State, which are two very different movies. And neither one of them has anything to do with this. But, like, that's the era we're working with here. And Negative two? <laughs> Negative. I'm, let's give this a negative two. I didn't hate it, but it's not for me, and it's not something I would recommend. Even our other Christmas podcast pals, if you want to cover it, go for it. But don't say I didn't warn you. Yeah, it's just it's just kind of there, right? Right, and we we did kind of just pick it because it was the shorter of the two. <laughs> literally picked based on the runtime between the two movies so and, and and yet bradford still could not give it his full undivided attention it to, be, just, uh... to be fair neither could i yeah i watched enough of it and i got my notes in but come on guys negative two negative zero two. negative two zero is that where we're gonna land zero negative two that's where our crankometer for an all dogs Christmas Carol is going to lie is going to land, and oh boy, I mean, it's no Daddy's Home too. But then what is? I I I I, I want to say I enjoyed Daddy's Home too a lot more than this movie. Oh yeah, like it, unquestioned. unquestioned. Low walls to jump over here, but come on. <laughs> This is is kind of like the joke in Hot Fuzz, <laughs> where Nick Angel does the backflip over the fence, and then Nick Frost just crashes through <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty uh, much what we're working with here, guys. So I'm sorry that I made y'all do this tonight. That's fine. This is what we're. This is what this podcast is about: is watching garbage, and this was garbage. I mean, so it's, it's this, all good. 
these are the trenches that we we said we wanted to get back into. Have we discovered the it, meaning of Christmas yet? <laughs> I think the meaning of Christmas is for businesses to make up any sort of loss of income over the 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 rest of the year, right? Is that where we're? Is hey, that where we landed? Yeah, I hate to say it, I really do, but I think South Park got it right. <laughs> the spirit of Christmas really is commercialism. Um. I I I really want to watch like really so bad it's good garbage. Give me I need another Rap City Street Kids. <laughs> Give me one of those, please. Oh man, Ugh. I was I was thinking about Rap City Street Kids. This is like we're winding this down, so I'll give us this thought and we'll we'll be on our way. I was thinking about Rap City Street Kids the other day because I we saw we went to see Godzilla versus Kong or Godzilla X Kong because they're lovers now. <laughs> and it's great like it's a great dumb action movie it's my kind of thing but i see people online saying like oh the graphics look terrible the visual effects look terrible and i'm like have you seen rap city street kids do you know what terrible <laughs> graphics are because i don't think you do <laughs> right i mean it's it's uh, i don't know have you seen wish <laughs> have you seen wish go watch wish and then watch Godzilla X Con and Kong and tell me which has worse graphics. <laughs> Please. Oh man. Oh god. Have you seen Phantasm? It's free on Tubi. It's good for a watch or a rewatch. <laughs> you know, you're making a good case here for Phantasm, J Man. Maybe I maybe April Sadness doesn't have to be all bad. <laughs> yeah. We're not watching Phantasm for this. No, I'm I'm kidding. We can watch it for our, for our own selves. We can watch it for our own selves and have a good time. Yes. But uh, <sighs> is, is there anything else we want to talk about before this show ends tonight, guys? I already talked about Phantasm. Yeah. Yep. You got that in. <laughs> Check. Got that. I I did my uh, Mice and Men joke. That's great. Okay. Um, I think we covered it all, guys. We we talked about how Don Bluth loves killing dogs and other animals. Yep. I mean, got that. Like, been, but even been on kind of a Don Bluth kick lately this week. Like we watched um, the second American uh, American Tale movie, Five Goes West. Literally ends with a dog staring at a sunset, and you realize like, oh, that's Jimmy Stewart's last movie role. He like this dog dies at the end of this movie. Whoo, yowza! So, oh. Uh, yeah, we again, we don't know what's coming next on the podcast because if we call our shot, they're just going to take the movie away from us. So why yes. even bother? But rest assured, we will find some fun trash and bring it to you soon uh, on the next episode of Christmas Creeps. So if you want to send us uh, your requests for anything or just, just yell at us for no reason, you can email us at xmascreeps at gmail.com. You can find us on all the socials. We're, you know, at on Twitter, Facebook, uh x blue sky whatever you want to call them at christmas creeps that's where we are uh or you can go find our discord channel that the link is in the show notes that's kind of where we spend most of our time that's where the fun stuff happens it's where the magic happens uh if you want to call it magic yes (laughs) (laughs) that's where mostly it's mostly just post reposting stuff about video games and politics it's most, where, where that happens. It's mo- yeah, mostly video games, politics, memes. Every once in a while, uh, our, our buddy uh, Dr. Nick will talk about some gunplay stuff. It's a good time. Uh, gunpla. So, gunpla? Thank you, sir. Gunpla. Yeah. We talk about gunplay as well, but that's mostly in video game chat as well. Yeah, Anyhow. I mean, <laughs> whatever. So, we have almost talked as long as, as the feature film that we were discussing this this week. So, let's just end the show here. Uh, folks, thank you for listening to Christmas Creeps. I've been Joseph Wade. I'm Bradford. Uh, oh, is it my turn? <laughs> yeah, Maybe. You want to talk about Phantasm some more? Uh, yeah, I'm Reggie Bannister from Phantasm. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas.